Hey guys, Pastor Jurgen here. I'm so glad you're tuning into one of our powerful messages that is guaranteed to absolutely elevate your life to another level. At Awaken, we only want to preach fresh, real, powerful to help you grow stronger in your walk with God, develop your faith so you can take more territory. I'm praying that God blesses you and enriches your soul as you listen to this amazing word from God. God bless you. How many of you are grateful for all the goodness God's shown to you? How many are you happy to be alive in the summer of 24? Come on. As the old adage says, you may not be what you want to be, but thank God you're not what you used to be. How many have grown over the last six months? How many have gotten better in your mind, better in your family? Come on, how many came though today? Also, there's a gap between where you are and where you want to be. Anybody have something in front of them and you're like, oh my gosh, it's a better version of myself relationally, financially, physically. Come on, do me, do me a favor for a minute. Just put your hands on your heart and say, God, I open myself up to you. I came because I need your help, your wisdom, your direction, and your help and healing. Heal me everywhere I hurt today and remove confusion from my mind and give me God ideas in Jesus' name. Someone say, in Jesus' name, amen. Hug it out with three people and tell them you look amazing and then you can sit down. What an absolute honor it is to be here. Before I uh, speak, can we give the worship band an incredible, were they awesome or what? Give them a big old clap. They were here while you and I were sleeping and eating donuts. Come on this morning. No, just kidding. We're San Diego. We don't eat donuts. We eat like flatbread stuff or whatever. But isn't that awesome that they have that kind of level of commitment and dedication? And I want to honor everybody who served today to make this campus so special and wonderful. If you're some part of service, whether you're at the doors, your security, I saw those girls working so hard in the back with the uh, different stuff. And then the people taking care of your kids. How many have kids in the kids department? How many know your kids are 99% angel, 1%, come on, crazy? How many know that's the truth? How many of you know probably half of you came in here and you knew your kid was about to be the 1% crazy when you dropped them off? So you smiled real big and you had like, I'm going to go praise the Lord. And you knew you were going to put your kid that's about to go crazy in there. Come on. Make sure you say thank you to those people that are handling your 1% crazy, 99% angel kid. Um, before I go any further, uh, I want to honor my wife is with me today, Katrina. Stand up. You look amazing. I love you. I like making out with you. I'm stirring it up for later. Come on, I'm just putting ideas. I'm projecting. I have an incredible partner who shares life and handles so much. And as a guy who travels, and I travel a ton, I think it was home at one point for like maybe about, um, I think the last three weeks, maybe three to four days. And so... So having someone who's able to share and handle everything is just, not just handle everything, but love me and love my beautiful girl. And my daughter's here. Kira, stand up. I like always looking at Kira because they told us we couldn't have a child. So every time I have her stand up, it's just, it's just got one way to punish the devil. You said I couldn't, and look at what God did. You said it wouldn't work. Look at what God did. Come on, God did. Come on. Don't let DJ Khalid be the only one that says God did. Come on. I want to honor our pastors, Jurgen and Leanne Matesius, my dear friends. And um, I was so impressed by their leadership that uh, Katrina and I, we talked about it for about four, maybe three, four years. We could come and have the opportunity to speak here, but we were so blown away at the leadership and the freedom and the security that was found in them to empower people. And uh, that's not always seen, even in a lot of great churches. And this was the healthiest model we've seen. And I've been in, spoken in 56, I think, countries. 
And this is the healthiest model, healthiest brand of church I've ever seen. And I love our pastors because they let people use their own personality, their gifting to serve and honor God. And I, I'm honored to be a part of this church. I give to this church. I love being able, so this is a great honor. Pastor Morgan and Jenny, can we get up for our campus pastors? All the commercials, I got to do the commercials. Um, what an incredible uh, prophetic gifts they have on them and teaching gifts. And I love the way that they care for people. And I think we met, I didn't side swipe right. I, we met at, uh, during the, um, I think we really kind of met when we were at, uh, you were doing the 12 step program. And you were helping all these people battle so many things. And I love the freedom and liberty you gave people to face challenges in their life and through God's grace to heal through things. And I was so impressed. I was just blown away. I remember going, I even brought my own family when I heard you were invite me back to speak at the commencement of it. I brought my family from Canada because I wanted them to come see, and it brought so much hope and healing to our own family who had family members battling addiction. And so just as Dana gave that word to me, by the way, was that not freaking crazy what she just said? We could have all gone home. <laughs> Katrina's like, I don't think they need you. She can just keep her up there. Joking. Uh, but I just really, really honor you guys. And I want to honor Jeff Forbes. Um, And I just want to say, it's been a real privilege to get to know you and watch your leadership and the way that you've led in difficulty and challenge. And I love your heart for people and a little heart to just make things better. Everywhere you go, you make people and things better. How many are you grateful for Jeff Forbes if you don't know him? They separated us at birth. They call us twins. It's like the Danny DeVito versus Schwarzenegger. Yeah. But um, I really honor your gift. And at, by the way, at the Merge thing, I had the chance to speak there uh, this past last couple of years. And uh, by far, your speech and your message was the hands down, the highlight, and the most impactful. My wife went and listened to what Jeff Forbes, she goes, I'm watching Jeff Forbes. And she went, no joke, she's the, I think you're the only person she watched. <laughs> she went online and she watched that baby, Leanne. And she watched it and she's like, oh, my gosh. She goes, Rex, now you need to do this, 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 this. So thank you for that. You made me grow. Um, I also, uh, if anybody else to honor here real quick, Kelsey, where's Kelsey? Kelsey's in the back. So love you, Kelsey, if you can hear me. And thank you very much. And Ben, you've been with me for 16 years. Ben's here today with his son, Isaac. Awesome. Thank you for being here. Okay. All right, all the commercials are out of the way. I have a really good message I want to speak to some to, to you today. If you were here, the first mess, the first was off the charts, and some of the things that God did was off the charts. But if you're open to it for a minute, would you let me just pray for a couple people before I start? Are you cool with that? I know that's not normal church protocol, but I want to pray for people because I care about people. And when I came out of professional sports, I watched my mom suffer from fibromyalgia. And it was hard watching her sit on a couch and battle the pain, the all the different things that go with it. And it started out with hoping to get well. Then it went to believing it could happen to expecting it could went well. And I watched these levels from hope to belief to expecting and the momentum happened. And then God's grace, come on, overtook us. You start planting the right seed. It's amazing. You do harvest the right harvest. And I always said, you know what, Jesus, I'm going to pray for hurting people everywhere I go. Even if people want to attribute you to maybe someone they saw on TV or a gimmick or whatever, you prayed for people, two-thirds of his ministry, and because he, he cared for people. Is that fair? Can I do that before I speak? I'll speak really good. But I just want to pray for people just for a minute. I've done it at Facebook. I interrupted my whole entire motivational speech at Facebook with a word of knowledge on a woman, and she fell down with no people behind her. And I was supposed to be the speaker that was supposed to motivate Facebook even more. And it ended up, uh, they gave me 30 minutes and I left two hours with my wife, two hours and 47 minutes later with everyone except for two laying and crying on the floor. And the power of Jesus invaded a dark place. All right, so what's he going to do? Is he going to do magic? No. Miracles aren't magic. I've, uh, if you have been, been having pain uh, in your body, just lift your hand for a minute. If you have any pain in your body, what's been happening, miss? Can I ask you? In your hip, in your, it's slipping hip. Okay. What's your name? Can I pray for you? Okay, man. Can you come in the aisle if that's okay? 
why would you do this? Because it matters to Jesus. And I decided to follow him, not believe in him. How many know that you can believe in him and do nothing with your life? You can follow him and you become more like him. Jesus didn't ask people to believe in him. He asked people to follow him. Anybody followers still follow Jesus? Come on. After the Jesus style in life. Jesus, if you're anywhere around the neighborhood, I thank you that you're my savior, but you're my healer and you're my victor. Let your healing presence right now flow through her body. I thank you for flowing through her hip. Remove every bit of pain and inflammation. Readjust, I pray, her structural, Lord, in her back and her hip. And, Lord, I thank you for taking every bit of pain away from the sciatica. I thank you that, Lord, to restlessness in her mind over different ideas about decisions she's going to make about things to come. I thank you for settling the matter. And the Lord says, watch what I'm going to open for you in the end of September around the 29th through the 31st. An unexpected door of opportunity is going to come to you and your family. And you're going to see a path that's not there yet, but it's going to open unto you. And it's going to be a rich reward. It wouldn't shock me if something to do with your career. It's going to be another opening. It wouldn't shock me if you're right wherever you are in that area, but something's going to open up some career element, and I thank you, God, for expanding her in your beautiful name, Jesus. You feel warmth in your body as I'm praying for you? You feel energy? What do you feel? Your knees are shaking. Move your hip. Look for healing. You should feel better. This isn't Dancing with the Stars, San Diego version. She's like, hey. Does it feel better? It does in what way? And it, and it, you walked in with clicking. So isn't that wild? You came out. You had the guts to come out in the middle. We said a little prayer to Jesus if he was in the neighborhood. He tends to be in the area code. He loves to go where people want him, not just talk about him, inform people about him, but where he's wanted, his involvement's wanted. Remember where he gets involved, things improve. Isn't that cool? Wherever he's involved, he's isn't that cool? Still, so thanks for coming to church. Free health care. Better than Trump's plan and Biden. He doesn't have a plan. Kamala just got hit by a coconut. You don't even know where she's at. That was good right there. Enrique, come here. I want to pray for you for a minute. You're a good man. Lord, I thank you for our friend Enrique. Thank you for the incredible gift he is. I thank you for his ingenuity and brilliance, but I thank you for his heart. And I thank you, God, for it's felt like a season of just intense struggle for three weeks or three months, excuse me. I thank you, Lord, for just touching his mortal body. I cancel Satan's plans against him. I cancel Satan's plans against him. I cancel the enemy's plans to rob him, to steal what belongs to him. Thank you for health and vitality. And I thank you for re-energizing. I thank you for the lobes of his lungs even being touched this day. Open all eight lungs, all those lobes. Open, 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 open. You said whatever I open on earth will be opened in heaven. So I open it by the authority of your word. And I thank you, Jesus, for flowing into his body, touching his blood, his, bio, his organs, regenerating and opening all his blood vessels. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for touching your kid that you're very, very proud of. I thank you that this ends well. Thank you that this ends well, and God's got you. There is no death sentence. There's life extensions in your future. Thank you for it in Jesus' name. Don't lift your hand, but there's someone here, when I said that, it looks like you're headed towards divorce, and there's no way out. And God's going to turn the matter. God is going to turn the matter. I want to give somebody hope in here. There's a life extension coming to a marriage where you don't see things. You see things as permanent, that there's such a wall. And God's going to do a work. He's going to give you a picture of who that person was 13 years ago. And you're going to walk out of here with a brand new vision. And God's going to bring and thread back together what's been separated by strife and not seeing eye to eye, there's going to be a new appreciation level and God's going to be the one, the silver lining that threads the needle again and brings back the thing that's disconnected is going to be reconnected and where you've known a dishonor, where it's, it has been like this, so much dishonor for about two years, full of convoluted just confusion. God's about to settle this matter and it's going to end in togetherness, not apartness. God's going to redeem the matter. It's, it's going to be better than even it was before because mercy's involved. 
I, I don't want I don't want you to stand because I don't want to put anybody on the spot there, but that's going to happen. Some also somebody had an abortion 16 years ago, and you're going to be healed in your subconscious today. Even when I'm speaking today, you're going to be healed. God's going to do a creative miracle in your subconscious where you felt so much anxiety and death and regret and shame over that. Shame is coming off you today, and strength is going to come in you. No more shame on you, but shame off you. No more shame on you, but shame is coming off you. And Jesus is rolling away that reproach so you can live in promise, not in pain of the past. You're going to visit and see a son in heaven, and he's going to be well. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. You feel that energy flowing through you? Yeah, it's a good day for you. It's comeback day today. I really appreciate you too. You're a gift. Awesome. Ooh, who's he going to call out? Someone's in the back. Choose me, choose me. Oh, my gosh, what does he see? Is he going to see my sins from 1938? No, you're going to be alive. I like you. You're just happy. Who are you? Tell me why. What's cool about your husband? What do you love about him? Awesome. Did you hear that guy's awesome testimony today? How inspiring was that that God did that for that guy? Derek, is Derek? So that would make sense, Derek. You got healed to bring hope and healing. Why don't you come help me? That only makes sense. God heals people to help people, right? He's the big deal. Jesus is the healer. I love it. That's really cool that your wife likes, she endorses you like that. You're, you, man, you're a boss. That's cool. Ooh, did you hear that? That was popping. It's a big beard. Oh, they have like beard love right there. That was weird. Beard love. Not beer love, beard love. Awesome. Okay, just lift your hands because you care and God's going to touch you. And I love that your wife just puts you on spot. That's awesome. Jesus, if you're anywhere around the neighborhood, go ahead and now pray for him, Derek. Go ahead and get him healed. Because you care. You don't got to say all the right words. Just give it away. And I'll speak in three minutes. There we go. Good job. Jesus, we thank you for bringing healing all throughout my friend's body, his mind, his heart. We thank you that it's comeback season, seasons of restoration. We thank you for restoring health to him, restoring and renewing hope. And I thank you that where things have been deflated off and on, there's just felt like a balloon inside you for about three years and a quarter. That God, I thank you that's shifting. He's moving out of that chapter of his life. He's exiting that chapter and he's entering no more deficit. He's entering a place called surplus. I thank you for a surplus of hope. And I thank you that there's an excellence, there's an ingenuity in you that's going to be seen and felt. On a business side, I thank you for being with him and multiplying things through his hands. And I think you're going to make up for a financial deal the two years ago that went wrong, probably around like the, 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 the first quarter, somewhere toward the end of the first quarter of two years ago. And I thank you, God, for restoring him, restoring his soul and his body in Jesus' name. Stretch your hands for thank you, God. Say thank you, God, that you're bringing healing to my friend in Jesus' name. Amen. You feel that going through your body? What'd you feel? That's cool. Sweating and it's fun. It's awesome. When you come to our church, our goal is to make people sweat. Isn't that awesome? That was your, come on, you got him healed. Move your body around. Tell him to move his body. Watch how good he feels. Yeah, I, I heard your message up there and I felt that because uh, I struggle with marijuana, just smoking all the time. And I'm sure a lot of that has to do with the past injuries and the foster care home that I grew up in and the sports injuries kind of. I don't want to get on a pain prescription because my family be battled with addiction their whole life too. So like drugs scare me. Um, at the same thing, and I know that I can get hooked really fast just because that's what my family is. So when I heard your message, I felt this. Yeah. Wow. Hey, anybody else have the courage to say I'm battling either medication or battling with weed? And it's you know, I, I, I'm anybody battling that way? And you like. Hey, I might, I'm not totally ready to go to maybe recovery yet, but I just need help in that area. If you, or you're battling maybe like PTSD, 
would you just stand? I won't have you talking to Mike. Would you just stand, and I'm going to let them pray for you? Because if a grace got Derek out, and then grace got him out, why not grace help you and your family? And the Bible says a spirit of prophecy is a testimony of Jesus, that when Jesus talks about what he does for somebody, he'll do for anybody when you, be, and when you talk about it. Anybody just have the courage to stand? There was a moment in my life I need to stand. Okay, thank you for standing. Thank you for that courage. Anybody else? Anybody else? I know this is an unorthodox church, but this is cool. This is better than Jerry Springer show. Come on, this is real. This isn't staged. Anybody else? Okay, awesome. If you're around these wonderful humans, don't put your hand on their head, but put your hand on their shoulder because that takes a lot of darn courage for a person to stand up and say, I need help. Come on, that's powerful about our church. There's freedom to say, hey, I, I know where I'm not where I want to be yet, but I need God's grace, his help to get out. And we're going to pray for freedom for a minute. Come on. Lord, let's just pray just for 10 seconds and we're going to go forward. Lord, we thank you for bringing healing and hope and freedom over all of our friends that are struggling today. I pray PTSD would be lifted off of people. I pray people that are battling, Lord, even addictions. I know there's a bunch of people, probably about 11 people on medications to things that have been prescribed. I pray you bring healing to people today. Liberate people from all these scenarios. I thank you that the Bible says by Jesus' stripes we are healed. Not might be healed, we are healed. So we command healing today in his name for his glory and for your good right now in your body and mind. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. Say amen. I'm going to speak. Come on, let's do this. By the way, how many feel better already in your body and your mind? We haven't even started talking yet. Look at those hands. I love that. I was in Canada two weeks ago, and at the end, the pastor asked people, how many people got healed in their seat. I only prayed for four people physically in front of people, or four or five people, and over 100 people stood up and said they were physically healed, that God healed them in the row 18, row 20, because when God's word goes out and his presence is here, how many know you just don't want his teaching, you want his touch? How many just don't want his principles, you want his presence? Or else you're just stuck with religious stuff. Nobody want that. All right, all right. Okay, here we go. John chapter 5. It's on the right-hand side of your Bible. I encourage you to read this all week long. It's gonna, I'm going to go nine verses, and you're going to love it. It's going to be good, and it's going to help your life move forward in a powerful way. And uh, it's going to be tight, but it's going to be good, and then God's going to also prophesy to people today. It's going to be very, very powerful. It goes a little something like this. Verse 1, chapter 5 of John. In Spanish, they call him John. Okay, here we go. That was a huero pelón, a pequito español. That means little Spanish from the bald white guy. Come on, say. Later on, there was a Jewish festival or a feast for which Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now, there is in Jerusalem a pool near the sheep gate. The pool is called in the Hebrew tongue Beth Ezda. Well, let me just say, Beth Ezda means house of grace or place of grace. So you have an idea. That's what it means. It has five porches or doorways. In these lay a great number of people that are sick. Some are blind, some are crippled, some are paralyzed. They're waiting for the stirring of the water. For an angel of the Lord would go down at appointed seasons into that pool and would move and stir it up. Whoever then first stepped in after the stirring of the water and stepped into it was cured of whatever disease he was afflicted. There was a certain man there who had suffered with a deep-seated, lingering disorder for 38 years. Someone say a long time. Verse 6, when Jesus noticed him there, lying there helpless, he asked him a question. He already knew he'd been in that condition a long time. He says, yo, do you want to become well? What a question. And when the Amplified says, are you really earnest or determined to get well? Just touch your person next to you say, are you determined to get better? Yeah, that's the question. It's a question I want you asking your own self every day. Come on, am I determined to get better? Verse 7, the invalid said, sir, I have no man when the water stirred up to put me in that pool. But while I'm trying to get into it, someone else gets down ahead of me. Verse 8, Jesus said to him, rise or get up, pick up your bed, and walk. I like that. Get up, pick up your bed, and walk. And immediately or instantly, the man became well, and he recovered his strength. 
took up his bed and walked, and that happened to be the Sabbath day. All right, we're gonna this is, let's go for it. Okay. Powerful is in this, John is the only one who talks about this in all the gospels. This is only written in the book of John. And if you're a studier of the Bible, let me be a little bit um, like uh, a little bit of like a, a educator for a minute. It's interesting that they're at this place called a pool of grace, and there is a gate, and Jesus is known as the gate to grace. And it's interesting, there's five doorways, and five is always symbolic in the New Testament of apostle, prophet, evangelist, tad, pastor, teacher. And it's interesting, if you were metaphorically to look at this, and I won't park here, but metaphorically, it's interesting, this could be kind of the church. They've come through the door, the gate of grace, and they're by a pool, and there's people there that are in the church, but they're blind, they're crippled, and paralyzed. They've lost vision, they have limited movement, and the people just plain stuck. Oh, hey. I can't preach this. This is just, I'm not going to preach this today. I gave this to Morgan in the back. He'll preach it better. Come on, he'll, he's much better. Of a, he'll do a better job than me. But for the sake of it, I just want to throw this out there. If, since it gives you some context when you read it this week and go, oh, I might be in a place where I'm visionless, maybe not about my, my career, but my relationships. I might be visionless about my health. Come on. I might be visionless about my children. Come on, somebody. I'm trying to manage them, don't have a vision for them. Okay? I might be lame. I might have some movement, but other movement might be limited. I might be born again, but I'm still struggling with addiction. I might say I'm healed, but I'm battling diabetes. Come on, somebody. My insulin levels. Okay? Then there's other people that you used to have movement and freedom, and now you're like that man for 38 years. You are stuck. You're paralyzed. The fruit was he's paralyzed, but the root was he had a condition that made him paralyzed. Always when there's fruit, there's always a root. Come on, somebody. Most of us want to trim the fruit, not uproot the root. Come on, somebody. That's where we get mixed up in the faith world with miracles and the supernatural because the supernatural says it doesn't exist. And this doesn't exist. This doesn't, I don't have pain. I don't have pain. You can have pain but still have faith that God is your healer and step into healing. But a lot of the faith movement said, well, you don't have pain. Well, that's BS. That's a lie. Come on, but you can have faith to pull up the pain, come on, and say, I'm dealing with it, but the truth is, this is the lie, this is the truth that by Jesus' stripes I'm healed. Come on, and then front and confront that thing and get well. So it's interesting as I give it in its context a little bit that this is a feast. It's a time of celebration, elation, and a party. To celebrate means to make an event out of, to enjoy. I don't know about you, but I look at the scriptures, Jesus came from a very happy place. He could not be, he was never talked about like he was grumpy. He was moody. Come on, somebody. He never, they never talked about Jesus having off days emotionally. People could convict him about a lot. He messed up church services. He spit in people's eye and they got their sight. That'd be dope. I could try later if you got faith for it. Come on, somebody. As long as you're with me, Jeff. Come on, somebody. Come on, tell a blind man, go walk two miles. We would say so insensitive, AOC would say. So insensitive, Jesus. How many know the wisdom of God trumps the wisdom of man? God tells me to do something dumb, put my hand on someone's body. He says, I'll do something brilliant, I'll make them well. Come on, not everything makes sense. Come on, you say the name of Jesus and I'll reborn your spirit. Come on. But he just said, it's interesting. Everybody was showing up at the celebration of life, and Jesus showed up at the celebration of life. Let me say this. The most spiritual thing you can do in your life, and actually you have a responsibility to be, is the most happiest, full of praise, celebratory person. If you're in relationship with God, God loves to celebrate. He loves celebration. What do you mean? If you notice Jesus, he was always at Zacchaeus' house. He was at Matthew's house. He's at a party over here. He was always where there was life and activity. Come on. He did not live invisible. So I ask you the question for a minute. How often do you celebrate? How much of your life do you spend in joy? Because the most spiritual thing is joy. Because the level of your joy is the level of your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength strength. Come on. And if you look at most people, it's an energy leak on joy. They got a lot to live on, little to live for. 
They live out of states of emotion that work against them rather than for them. They're not living out of joy. You see it in most people's posture and their state. Anybody with me on this kind of a thing? But it said Jesus showed up at the celebration of life and so should you. I remember going to so many places in my life and career, opportunities presented themselves that were special for me. But I remember going, okay, I'm going to enjoy myself when I get here. I'm going to have fun when this happens. I'm going to have a great time when this occurs. I'll have fun when I'm going to celebrate when this happens. I was always putting joy off to some future moment. And as an opportunity, the enemy got in there and he stole my moment. I don't want to waste the time that I got left because I'm working against the clock like you is. And the moments that are most meaningful are the ones you spend in joy. Come on, somebody. You say, you really talking about joy? Talk me about the deep things of God. Tell me the deep things. Give me the, give me the prophetic word like you did on the news the other night that came true with Donald Trump and the Supreme Court. Give me, give me the heavy word. How are you going to enjoy and handle a prophetic word if you don't know how to live in a joy on a Tuesday and a Monday in spite of your boss, in spite of what's going on? In spite of, I didn't say your feelings had to feel joy. You just decided to live in joy. Hey, come on. It didn't matter whether people were criticizing Jesus, stabbing him in the back, come on, planning his demise. It did not let him kill the joy that was in his heart. The righteousness, peace, and joy, joy is one-third of God's kingdom. It's going to be tough, actually, to walk with God if you're negative. Because God is highly positive. (laughs) He's hope. Come on, you can't get more positive than hope. Come on, somebody. How am I going to walk with God if we're on two different frequencies? He on FM, you on AM. He's talking about future and hope, and your thoughts are on negativity and permanency of what's negative in your life. Come on, you can't get an FM radio station on an AM dial. You ain't going to get miracles talking about misery. Ooh, this is good teaching. I haven't scratched the We're on verse 1. 1 1. Come on, somebody. Imagine that you have a responsibility this week to be the most happiest, joyful people that you work with. If you turned up the joy in your life because it's in you, if Christ is in you, you have joy inside you. It's a fruit of the Spirit. And you get to determine, I wonder how better life is if you're a joyful husband and wife, if you're a joyful parent, if you're a joyful employee, if you're a joyful co-worker, if you're a joyful church member, is life better? Is there more hope? Come on, somebody. Life shifts when they're joy. Well, why people don't? Because they're waiting to feel something. What I noticed about God is God don't consult your feelings about certain things. Hey, how do you feel, Rex, about tithing? Has God ever asked you about that? Hey, how do you feel about healing? I'm a healer, but I want to know how you feel about it. No, he don't ask you to, he don't ask you to feel strong. He says, be strong. He don't say to feel like praying. He says pray and something big will happen. Notice that God puts a demand on your potential which shows something. If you're going to live in joy of God and strength, i got to make a decision. Not like I'll try, not I'll see, not I wish, not I hope. i got to make a decision that I'm going to enjoy and live in joy. Why? Because when you live in joy, actually science will prove out you'll become more creative. You'll have a stronger immune system. Your heart will be healthier. You can actually lower your cholesterol. You can clean out your blood. And if you really wanted to be spiritual, if you decided to smile and laugh four minutes a day, you'll actually boost up your metabolism and you'll lose freaking fat. Somebody's like, amen. In fact, anybody want to lose a piece of fat in here? Totally unspiritual. Come on, everyone grab a piece of fat you want to lose. Come on, somebody. And if the person next to you don't grab it, grab theirs for them. Come on, somebody. All right, look at that. Look at how many people smiling right there like, hey. Okay, let's be spiritual again, okay? Imagine if you made a decision, because Jesus said, no man, John 16, 22, can take your joy from you, only you can give it away. To complaining and blaming, let me say this, I said this in the first verse. If God inhabits your praise, who inhabits the complaints? 
just as a bee seeks certain kind of sweet nectar from a certain flower, not all flowers, God looks for an environment where there's joy and where there's praise. And let me say this, if you have a promise before you and there's been an attack on your mind saying the promise won't happen, the only way you can get from the promise to the prosperity of that promise is to win the battle that's over your mind. And the only way to win the battle over your mind is through mindfulness. Am I making sense? Holla back if I'm making some sense up in here. Mindfulness as psychology would teach you is meditate, be still, be at one, find your yoga mat. Turn on the nice scent of candle, come on. Mm, come on. Chant. Do the Tony Robbins, come on, affirmations. I like Tony, he's awesome. That ain't going to get me to God's promise. Come on, somebody. But mindfulness in God, because Jesus talked about it, don't worry. Don't let your mind go freaking out. Come on. If God takes care of birds, come on, blind birds, how much more are he going to take care of you? By the way, when was the last time you saw a stressed out bird? Come on, birds wake up in the morning. They go have a little bit of McDonald's. Then they wish they wouldn't have had that McDonald's. and they go to the park. They find someone's negative. Come on, to the other church, and they poop on their car. Then they go hit up, come on, Taco Bell, God takes care of them. You don't see them, they're singing off key and they're still in a good mood. Come on, some of you are all freaked out like God's going to abandon you. How do you stay mindful? Through praise. Because it's interesting, praise allows you to take control of your mind because it shifts not just your perspective, it shifts your posture. Oh, this is good. Amen my own self. Praise shifts your perspective because now you got to think about all the blessings you have from God. Praise starts to remember God in your trouble, God in your midst, God for what he's done, God for what he's brought you through, God for what he forgave you from, what he healed you from, peace he gave you. And now I'm more mindful and I start to praise him, all of a sudden my posture changes. A strength and a faith comes out of me. Come on, I saw this even recently, a couple weeks ago. Um, it was a Saturday afternoon, and we were waiting on a real estate piece of property we wanted to go look at, and they were taking forever to get back to us, and we were a little bit frustrated, Katrina, Kira, and I. Thank you. Are you selling that on eBay? <laughs> I prophesied some good words in that jacket. There's some, oh, there's some oil on that thing. You put that on your body, you'll probably get healed. I believe that kind of stuff. Come on. I remember, so I was a little frustrated because it didn't work out on my timetable, and I was getting a little, a little frustrated. So I said to Katrina and Kira, I go, hey, let's go to, uh, there's a little place we like, Italian joint. Let's go get pizza. And Kira's like, okay, that sounds good. We like that place. But Katrina's like, oh, I want, I've already eaten. I want to go ahead and get uh, an IV. So she's going to go get like an IV, a vitamin B or whatever, vitamin D. And so it was right next to the little place. We go and eat, and we get done, and we go into the IV place, and Katrina's sitting on the right. There's a girl with black sunglasses. She's sitting on the far left. She just looks dark. Like just like, a, like she looks like she's down. So I talked to Katrina for a minute, and I go, okay, we'll meet you in the car. So Kira and I start to go walk out the car. We're walking through the hallway, Jeff, and all of a sudden, I hear this word like, you need to go give this message of Jesus to that girl. Go give her my idea. She's sitting in the corner. I go, Kira, God gave me a word for that lady. She goes, you're going to do it here? I go, yeah, come on. Come on, this isn't like in front of just people. Let's live the Jesus style. My sheep hear my voice. You're as close to God as you want to be. As close, God's always talking and healing and hoping and doing something great. If you want to be a part of him, you can. If you just want to watch what he does, then you can watch from a distance. I don't want to do that. I like up-close relationship. I like doing stuff with him. He makes you look good. So I go back and she goes, what are you going to say? I go, I'm going to share God's idea. So I told her these things. I said, excuse me, miss. And I shared these words to her and she starts crying like full on crying right there. Just start crying, taking off her glasses. How do you know these things? I'm like, well, God bless you. And I just walked out. <laughs> so kind and empathetic. I did a cure walked out with me, and we left her with my wife. Payback. <laughs> and so we get in the car, and we're just waiting, and Katrina comes back in the car. She goes, you have no idea what you just set in motion. I go, what? She goes, she told me she's getting an IV because she's on her way and she was all nervous getting vitamin B and anti.
anti-anxiety because she's about to go see her friend. They're about to pull the plug on her at Mission Viejo Hospital, Orange County. She had a massive stroke seven days ago. Both sides of her brain have stints, and she's on a life support, and they're going to pull the plug at 6 p.m. tonight, and she was going to visit her, and she was so tormented, and then you knew all that stuff about her. So I told her you would go pray for her. <laughs> Payback. Come on, any man in here, come on, that got enough courage, come on. I only got courage because I got the mic right now. But any man, ever, your wife pushed you into something you didn't want to do. It doesn't matter how, yeah, that's a word right there. Come on. Jeff's praying in tongues. Rabba shakatai. He's feeling juice right there. I mean, come on. Anybody ever had that happen? Oh, yeah, some of you had brave souls out there. Well, you should always want to do that. There's not days you always want to be on. Come on, I'm home like, come on, sometimes 10 days a month. I live in this. I'm like, oh, man, okay. She goes, yeah, we got to get there. We got to save her. She's into crystals and everything. She's going to go to hell if we don't go. I said, all right, let's go. So we're on the way, and we were listening to Bruno Mars. How many know I'm not going to get miracles listening to Bruno Mars? The dude can freaking dance. The guy can, come on. His edited versions are good. Come on, somebody, for most of the songs. Not all the songs, for most of the songs. Always guard your heart. Come on, when you feel words that are bad in your spirit just because the beat's good. Remember, the devil was a worship leader. He knows how to penetrate a culture. He always uses music to divert because he'll give you a nice sound. He'll give you the trick without the treat. That was good. Someone needed to hear that. Come on. Make sure it's an environment that's full of hope. Come on. It's a different environment. I love listening. I help some of these different rappers. And so I've written stuff for even some rappers. But I'll tell you this. I, I like beats when I can hear like Dr. Dre or you hear people like Wu, you can, Wu-Tang. Different, but then all of a sudden you can hear their sound. I'm like, ooh, I got to get out of that. That's like poison in my heart. I got to guard my heart, my ear gate, my eye. I like the beat. That's dope. But then you start talking about that eminent. I can't. Ooh, I got to protect my heart. Now, come on. I want to guard my heart. I won't turn on some Stevie Wonder. Come on, somebody. For once in my life, I won't let nobody hurt me. Come on. How many know different spirit? So I said, here I go, we got to shift the atmosphere. So we started listening to praise all the way there to the hospital to shift our mind if we're going to enjoy and be engaged in this moment and win the battle of our mind. I'm going to go somewhere with this. We go up to the second floor, and she goes, hey, Dad, isn't this place that you've helped a lot of people? Because I have, I think we've had six people in comas come out at that one hospital, truthfully. A lady, a girl that was paralyzed, thrown out of her car, paralyzed. All the paralysis from her chest down. Jesus removed the paralysis and answer to a prayer. True story, God did it. God did. Come on, don't let DJ Khalid say it. You say it. God did. Come on, I have powerful stuff. And I remember a girl, a six-year-old girl who had one kidney functioning, and a friend of ours asked me to go pray for her. And then she walked out, I think 36 hours, 32 hours later with two brand-new kidneys. Jesus did it at the chalk part of the hospital. So I said, yeah, God's done a lot of activity here. But when she started talking about God's activity, it started firing me up like, oh, shoot, I'm walking into a miracle. I'm not going to give her her last rites. I'm going to give her a life extension. I walked in. And I'm going to cut the story down because I'm way over. Watch. And I walked in. I said to the girl, I go, I said, I said to the guy, his boyfriend, he's 64 something years old. I go, hey, listen, I go, uh, can I, I want to, you know, pray for your wife or your girlfriend. He goes, ah, oh, man, I wish you would have known her when she's alive. And she was beautiful and all these things. He goes, I don't like, you know, the ministry stuff. I don't like all the prayer stuff and God stuff. But I like you because you're an athlete. I'm like, cool. He goes, I'll give you a little bit of time with my girl. And I got the 30-year-old girl I just gave the word to standing with me, and she's all into everything. She's all into new age. She was trying to find herself. She had all these emotions and energies and stuff. I'm like, perfect scenario. We got the dead lady, we got the atheist, and we got the new agey. And we got the Jesified. You spread some really happy, Joel. So I walked over to the lady, started talking to her. I said, everyone loves you, and I heard how special you are, and I came to talk to you. There's no, there's trach down her throat, all the tubes, and they're making sounds. <laughs> beep, <laughs> beep. And I'm trying to, I'm so here because I, I know you're nervous in your body about what's about to happen because you're about to go into eternity. So I came here today to tell you about somebody who loves you. He made you to love you, and his name is Jesus. I don't know if you've ever heard about it. I'm sure you had. She was all into crystals and all kinds of weird stuff. She was about to go to hell. And I go, uh, and I go, 
God loves you so much. He messed up my whole day plan just so I could be here, and this is the best part of it. So I want to tell you about him and lead you in a prayer to receive forgiveness for your mistakes and sins, and then he's going to touch you. And the girl next to me, there's no response. So she's like, are you okay? You're talking to somebody that's not responding. Eyes closed, the machine's on. So I said, I want you to pray this prayer with me. And I led her through a whole prayer, no response. You feel like an idiot. Just telling Trish straight, you feel stupid. And so I was leading her a prayer, and then at the end of it, I said, in Jesus' name, and her eyes popped open. And then the Kate, the next, the girl next to me, three goes, she's alive, she's in there, 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 she's in there. You would talk that way too, come on, you would be all, hallelujah. <laughs> Praise him. Come on, you wouldn't be like that. I'm talking about you are someone that's not there, now there. I go, did you just receive Jesus? Kate starts going, she's alive in there. I go, this is, it's not even over yet. Watch what's about to go down. She goes, what are you going to do? I go, go to the bottom where her feet are. I'm going to command life and praise God for healing her. And then I'm going to tell her to kick, and she's going to kick you. You like the prophetic direction? Come on, somebody. So I get this whole thing, and I start to say, thank you, Jesus, that not only did you forgive her, heaven's her home, but thank you that you're restoring life to her body. Thank you that you're healing. By the way, if you want to live in joy, you got to be full of thanksgiving. Jesus walked up to Lazarus' tomb. Thank you. I am the resurrection life, and he raised Lazarus. Thank you and multiplied the little boy's lunch. Jesus never asked the father to do anything. He thanked him, and then he performed. I wonder if you could go from anxiety to anticipation just by thanking God in advance for him showing up and being favorable to you. Give the Lord a clap and a shout like that made sense. Someone say it's making sense. Slap the person next to you, say, come on, you, you got five more minutes in this. Can you give me five? You cool? I might multiply some food. Come on, somebody. Throw some beef jerky sticks at you or something. So all of a sudden, I started thanking the Lord, thanking him, not asking him to raise her, just thanking him. You shift your satellite dish. Come on, you can't get an East Coast sh things on a, on the West Coast. You got to shift to where you want to pick up. If you want miracles, you got to shift. Come on, the Bible says, "Don't hang your harp in a place of defeat." Where you start, hey, I hang up my praise because I haven't seen what I wanted to see yet, and I'm waiting to see it before I praise Him. God says, "Take your harp off the tree." Psalm 137, David did took the harp, and they began to sing in the midst of darkness, and then light appeared. Maybe like by Paul and Silas, come on, they praise God in the midst of a cell. Then their chains fall off. They didn't praise after their chains fell. They celebrated after their chains. Come on. They praised them while the chains were on. Maybe there's a shaking going on where the enemies tried to use a dumb spirit to silence your praise. This is a word for many. Come on. Jesus is known in Revelation as the lion. This is totally different than the first service. Lion is a tribe of Judah. When God told his people to go possess promise, he said, praise. Judah's got to go up first. It's interesting. If Judah, praise goes up, the lion will come out. If you don't want to just be a lamb, tender, a servant, but you want to be a lion in your life, being a lamb like Jesus will make you a good person. But being a lion will give you a great life. Jesus died as a lamb, but he rose as a lion. If you want a lion to come out of you or you can get something big in your life and win, you got to have some praise inside you. Just for a minute, pause and give God three seconds of some praise in this place. Praise him. Praise him. Close your eyes and praise him. Praise him. Praise him. You're awesome. You're holy. You're good. All right, sit your butt down. Sit your booty down. You got to okay, watch. So all of a sudden, I started, I started, pra I started praising. Let me say this, actually. When I praised there for a minute, just a couple weeks back, we were in, we were in Rome. And I was speaking on this little tour in the, in the Europe. But when we went, Katrina, Kier and I, we went into Paul's prison the night before he was to be beheaded by Nero. Most of us, if we were going to be ch heads chopped off in a couple hours, it's on the Vatican. By the way, where the Vatican is, is all your brothers and sisters who are Christians who were killed right there for saying yes to Jesus. 
They didn't have a Bible. They didn't have a great pastor like Pastor Morgan. They didn't have a men's thing emerge like Pastor Jim. They didn't have a pastor. They didn't have any of that. They didn't have no Bible. They had praying in the Holy Spirit in tongues, fellowshipping with each other together and taking communion. And that they were more powerful where the Bible says they turned their world upside down with no social media, no text. The world don't need another political leader. It needs Jesus' people to be salt, light, excellent, integrous, godly, making powerful decisions, and full of joy. So I, we, we went in there, and we weren't supposed to film, so I decided to film because I didn't read the signs. I think we got 100,000 views on it, whatever. And I was in there, and it said the night before where everybody... There was a little tiny compartment where maybe you could fit maybe 20 plus people. There was 47 in there, and they had sewage up to their waist. And Paul, in the middle of the night, was baptizing them in sewage because they were saying, yes to Jesus, the government's not destroying us. They're not taking our, uh, God, God, I'm, I'm for God. He wrote the book of Philemon and said, my faith is becoming effective by acknowledging every good thing that's in me in Christ Jesus. And he wrote it from sewage. By the way, when you go read the book of Matthew, I walk where it was. That's where Nero skinned Matthew alive so you could have the book of Matthew. Don't decide I'm not reading my Bible. The guy was skinned alive for what he believed and served the Savior that you serve. Come on, come on. You being 15 minutes at in and out isn't the biggest trial of your life. Come on. I, we, I started praising. I said, Kate, get ready. Here she comes. Praising, I go, Amanda, move your feet. And all of a sudden, she started kicking her feet. This woman that was dead, I beat her son by 40 minutes. Her son had been flowing in, flying in to read the last rites to his mother, and they were going to pull the plug and take her off that machine. And she was going to go into eternity without Jesus. And God interrupted. Maybe your delay isn't just for over you. Maybe God's created a delay so that you could be a value to somebody else. That when you get there, it was richer. Because when it opened up, it became richer for us. But maybe the delay isn't just for you. Maybe you're supposed to help people along the way. But it's about me. Me, me, me. We're in America. Me, 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 me. Katy Perry tells me it's about me as a woman. The heiress to her says it's about me, Americana. Not Jesus. He says, if you want to follow me, you got to lose yourself, take up your cross, and follow me. Hey, come on. I know that's not a popular message. That ain't the sexy one. That ain't the one that's getting all the likes. Come on. I'm just talking about a real savior that I got to somehow adhere to. Say, He says, you're going to have to let go of some stuff, Rex, if you won't follow me. Come on. I know where I'm going. Come on. I know where I've been. I know where I'm going. That's what he said to religious people. You don't know where you're going. Watch how powerful. So it says, when that, that woman ended up living, by the way. But he says, they came to this pool known for miracle activity and grace, but it, not when it was stagnant, but only when it was stirred. It's 1230. I will have you on in a second. How fast can I do this? Oh, no, but I want to be honorable. I got to think how fast I can do this. Okay, here's how I'll do it. Stagnant versus stirred, a totally different experience. When the waters were stagnant, no one got well. When an angel stirred them, grace came out and something changed. How many know there's a difference when you're stagnant versus when you're stirred? You might be stirred in one area, but stagnant in another. Ever been there before? Am I the only one, so I'm not the hypocrite? What about the dreamer in you? A life, a culture, a church, a family is only as good as its dreams. Are your dreams are memorial to what was or are they, come on, a prophecy of what can be? They're products of your desires, but they're pictures of your potential and they're promises of your future. The language of the Holy Spirit in the book of Joel and the book of Acts is when the Holy Spirit touches your life, you will have vision and you will have dreams. It's impossible to get into the presence of God and not imagine a preferred and better future. Jesus was famous for asking people a question. Tell me what you want. If he walked through that screen and he said, hey, what do you want? What do you want? What do you want? What would you tell him? Oh, I want a little bit of this. The guy that can multiply loaves and you say, oh, I want a little bit. Some of us have so much poverty in our mentality. I mean, poverty is not a circumstance. It's a mentality. 
where you've lived on a deficit rather than profit. Maybe that's why God sent a profit to you so you don't live in a deficit, but then you can live at a small surplus of profit in your life. I like that because that just made me feel good. God, thank you for the prophets and prophetesses you send to my life so I don't have to live at deficits anymore. I can live in surplus. Watch how powerful. Stagnant dreamers. Have you stopped dreaming? Stop hoping? Stop believing? Well, I've been hurt too many times. This has happened. I've gone through much. I don't know about you. Your life will never become what you don't dream about. What about the lover inside you? Have you put up so much expectation and that expectation is now getting in the way of your love? When your expectation for people is high, what happens? The love is low. What do you mean by that? I'm sorry, I'm dishing this. Nobody stab me, okay? I don't got the secret service with me today. I gave President Trump a word the other day. It came true. Isn't that wild? I told him the Supreme Court would change things. They called me from their dinner table, and God gave me a word. I was on the elliptical machine. God brought that to pass, and he told them, I will protect you in the next two weeks, and then they'll keep you. Isn't that amazing? Sir, tell things I don't have secret service. Anyways, the lover, when my expectation's high of you, but my appreciation's low, I'm the one that suffers. Because now I have to manipulate you. I can't love you. Has anybody else failed in this besides me? If my expectation for Katrina, who I love, is so high, but my appreciation's so low, I suffer because now I got to manipulate her. I can't love her. I'm always looking for a hit, what she's not hitting and what she's not doing in my life. And if I'm suffering as a lover, it's because my expectation is so big, but my appreciation and my value for her at that moment is low. How many know that betrays the lover inside you? Because love puts a premium on somebody. How powerful would it be if you put a premium on the people that you work with this week and you say for seven days, I'm going to put a 10 on everyone's head consciously. That's a 10. That's a 10. In fact, if you wanted to become used in the gifts of the Holy Spirit, because you can, he lives inside you, and the gifts are for earth, not for heaven. You don't need the gift of healing in heaven. You don't need a word of wisdom in heaven. Come on, you don't need a prophetic gift in heaven. Come on, they're God's love language to the church through the church. Ask this question for people that are difficult and people that you're married to and your kids. Jesus, what do you love about this person? What if every one of us asked that question all week long? All thousand people that joined us this morning and we just went around all week. What do you love about this person? How many know you'd feel better because you'd look for what's good? And how many know when you ask that question, God will show you something he loves about that person? And then you could say, you don't even have to say, God says, hey, you know what? This is special about you. I do that all the time. This is really neat about you. This is, how do you know that? Why? That really makes me feel good. How do you, all of a sudden you have favor and you want people. How do you know if you start asking God, what do you love about this person? Would you be more connected to your family, your parents, your children, your grandparents, your coworkers that might be a little funky and off? What do you love about, could every one of us do that this week? Come on, anybody with me on this kind of a thing? It'll stir the love inside you. And if you have a tough time giving love away, it's because you're not receiving love. Can I ask you a real honest question? What are you doing with God's love? Are you accepting it or rejecting it? Because you don't feel you're worth it. Can I tell you something? When you start saying, God, I receive your love, you'll find reproach and shame will come off you because most of us were raised. Shame on you, you didn't do this. Shame on you when you're little, you did this. Shame on you, you did this. We get older, we don't say it out loud, but we start thinking, dang it, I missed that payment. Dang it, I messed up that relationship. Darn it, I made a bad choice. Shame on you. You could have done that. Shame on you. You should have graduated. You could have done both. Shame on you. You should have. You could have. What? Come on. Come on. And then shame on you. And so much shame gets it on you that you're no longer controlled by the mistakes. You think you're the mistake. Has anybody felt that? And I say that as I end today, this very thing, because people today, the lover is not stirred, it's stagnant, because shame has covered so much love inside people. We think something's wrong with us, that's why I'm here. Something's wrong with us, that's why they left. Something's wrong with me, that's why I don't have. Something's wrong with it. It's not that you're covetous, you're just confused. 
you're not covetous that somebody else has got what you don't got. You want them to have it, but you're confused why you don't got it. And it's because you see yourself through a lens of shame. So every time opportunity comes, you say, I'm not that kind of a person. God gives you an invitation, you give limitation because I see through a lens of shame. Something is wrong with me. Anybody feel me for a minute? Can I take the, the church thing off for a minute? And the minister thing just for a minute? How hard is it sometimes looking in the mirror and facing yourself, no matter how gifted we all are, because every one of us has got gifts. God did not, it's, God put gifting and anointing and graces on every person. Every person you see in this room right now, no matter their color, their background, their age, their bank account, there's a level of genius in you. Be careful, by the way, how you treat the Holy Spirit in people. That's real good. You ain't teasing, because that's a, be careful how you treat the Holy Spirit in people. God put something special in there. Don't treat it like it's common. My prayer is that you'll stumble upon the treasure buried in your field and God will remove that shame so he can restore your dignity and name. And the Bible says in Zephaniah, one of my favorite books of the Bible, you can read chapter three on your own this week just so you can tell him you read his book when you get to heaven. Zephaniah three says, I will restore your name in every place you knew shame. And I will restore your fortunes before your eyeballs. Anybody want to see some fortunes come back in your eyeballs? Come on. Anybody want to see that? Anybody want dignity being restored? That after your mistake or something happened, today, just lift your hands. Say, Jesus, thank you for loving me. Thank you that I'm the place and a recipient of grace. I see areas where I'm stagnant and I want to be stirred. I want the dreamer in me to be stirred. I want the lover in me to be stirred. I want the leader in me to be stirred. And I want the believer in me to be stirred. Stir me up, God. Remove every bit of shame. Heal my mind, my heart, and wash me with the precious blood that you shed on the cross. I receive forgiveness. I receive honor. Just for a minute, I want you to say that. I receive honor, high esteem, value, and healing in my soul. If you're battling anything right now, physically or mentally, I want you just to close your eyes. Every person here, I'm asking for 15 more seconds. I want you to see God put that on Jesus. I want you to see he put the diabetes on Jesus. I want you to see he put the perversion on Jesus, the greed on Jesus, your fears on Jesus. He put the torment on Jesus. He put the drug addiction on, Je on Jesus. He put the disease. He put your death sentence on Jesus. He put your mistakes, your infidelity. He put your stealing, your lying. He put that on. I want you to see that Jesus is taking it right now. And there's no double jeopardy. What God punished in Jesus, he can't punish it in you if you leave it with Jesus. I want you to see Jesus taking it right now. You'll see his hands open to you and his smile big before you with the eyes of light looking at your face. And he's saying, just give that to me now. I've already, I take it. I take it. I take it. Whatever that shame is, whether it's regret about something you should have done that you didn't do years ago, or last night you slipped up, just say, here it is, Jesus. Here it is. Just put it on him. Put it on his body. I want you to just do it as an act. Just say, here it is, Jesus. It's a prophetic act. Here it is, Jesus. And now I want you to put your hands, cup them, and put them on your heart. Say, I'm pulling back love into my heart. I receive love so I can hope and dream. My past is not my residence, only a reference point of where grace began. I am becoming new, and Jesus is healing me and freeing me from every bondage in my life. I have joy. In Jesus' name. For 15 seconds, you just worship and talk to God for a minute. Just talk to him. With your hands uplifted, ask him for anything you want. As a father, ask him for anything you want. 
ask him for anything you want. Ask big. Don't ask small. Ask big for a minute. Ask him for anything you want. Someone's child who has learning disabilities being healed right now. The chamber of someone's heart where you're on the verge of having a heart attack, you felt pressure on the, the lower chamber. The Lord is healing your heart right now, the lower chamber. Someone's sciatica is being healed right now. Female organs are being healed by multi, multiple women in here. There's a lower lumbar of the back that's being healed in the lower part by your butt on the right-hand side. You're a gentleman. You're being healed in your lower lumbar. Sleep apathy is being removed from people in here. There's like 11 people. You're going to start sleeping well in here. There's actually funny, there's someone's animal that's kind of unwell, and God loves you enough to help your animal. Your animal's going to have a resurgence of, like, life in him for, like, for a little while. It's the wildest thing. As a token of God's love for you, your animal is not your Savior. God's your Savior. But he's going to love you for touching your animal. In Jesus' name, amen. How many of you got something powerful out of today? How many feel better today? Lift your hands. Morgan, come on. I'm going to say this as I walk. Look in the month of September. God's going to open provisions for you that you've not seen. Hidden provisions are going to be released to the church, but to your life in the month of September. God put me, this is, he called me to this. I was an athlete and I was fine. He said, I want you to be a healing prophet to the nations. I didn't know what that was. I didn't ask for that. He called me to it. So I'm just doing my assignment. Is that fair? Are you 100% right all the time? I'm not. Am I right most of the time? I am. Is that fair? Do you miss it? I do. But am I right a lot of the times? Yeah. You miss all the shots you don't take. Come on. I take a lot of shots, but you can love people aggressively. And if you make up when you miss it. But I want there's, there's great financial things that are going to happen in the month of September for people's lives in here. And there's going to be transactions, deals that are going to go through, things that have been on hold, things that have been delayed. And even you're going to put your hand on some things that, like Peter, he went and put his hand on the fish's mouth and Jesus gave him his tax money. That there's going to be some things you're going to put your hand on over the next 60 days. And God said, whatever you put your hand on, I'll bless. Deuteronomy 28, whatever you put your hand on. Come on, I don't know about you. If you want blessing on it, I'm going to put my hand on it. Come on, I'm going to work like it depends on me, but I'm going to use my faith like it depends on El Shaddai. He's more than enough. How many want to believe for that to happen? But unexpected provisions, and there's even things that are have people have debts are going to be diminished, diminished drastically. Someone with like a 53, 54 thousand outstanding debt is about to be diminished drastically, probably to around 17,000, 18,000 in that capacity. And there's someone that's going to actually have a car given to them. Someone's going to bring you a vehicle. I've had it happen in my life. Someone's going to, there's a car, that's gonna, something's going to happen, and it's going to be a sign to you that God sees you. You feel alone and trapped, but God's going to give you, it's, it's going to be a sign, and also that you're going to come out of that depression that you've been in. That person, you've been in depression for a minute. It, it's a depressed feeling, but you're coming out since March of 23. You're coming out of that permanently, not just every once in a while. You're not, It's not hibernation. You're coming out of that sucker. And God is freeing you through this revelation so you don't live in hibernation. I want to say thank you for the privilege of speaking to you today. How many got, you guys got something good out of today? How many ready to go apply it this week? Thank you for letting me take a little bit longer of your day. I pray you feel honored. I pray you feel loved. I pray that you let this be a place where, man, you get better every week. You improve. Wow, what an amazing word. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. Hey, listen, for more information about our church, go to www.awakenchurch.com or subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already and download our app. It is amazing. It is chock full of incredible messages, information about upcoming events, and you can even support our ministry if you feel so inclined. We loved having you with us today. We look forward to seeing you again. God bless you. Live a life that is transformative. Bye for now.